family. I became interested in affordable and workforce housing uh, principally because one quarter of renters spend more than half their income on rent. 50% spend more than the 30% we think is the max you should spend. I thought to myself, you know, this great country needs to find a way to address the housing needs of these people. A decent home in a suitable neighborhood for every American family. We need as a country to allocate subsidy to make that happen. Not to eliminate personal responsibility, but to give people who need a hand up, a hand up. We have got to have more cooperation at all levels of society. It's really a wonderful thing when someone has had a successful and distinguished career that rather than retiring, they move on to address some of society's larger challenges. And Ron Terwilliger has just rolled out effort after effort to make things better for others. The thing that's impressed me about Ron's commitment to his philanthropic efforts is that he's caring, he's concerned, He's always been a leader, but he's really moved that whole quest for, for affordable housing forward. He has given of his time and energy and thought process and innovation and connections throughout the industry to really pull people in and help encourage a movement towards inclusionary housing. In the twilight of his hugely successful career at Trammell Crow Residential, he decided it was important for him to make sure the people that he couldn't reach in that career really got the same opportunities that he did. He's lent his money, his leadership, his talent, his work, his reputation to promote opportunity and community development that makes sense for low and moderate income people. He works every bit as hard, if not harder today, on these efforts than when he was a, a practicing developer. I've been on the board of Habitat for Humanity now for 14 years. What I didn't know when I joined is the plight of poverty housing that exists throughout the world. The thing that's been frustrating and surprising to me is when you talk to philanthropists, whether they be foundations or individuals, about providing help and housing, that doesn't seem to resonate. They, according to all of our studies, want to give money to health and education. But what I tend to say is, hey, if the family's living under a bridge, the kids are not going to have good health or education outcomes. I currently chair the board of Enterprise Community Partners. This is a company founded by a real estate man, Jim Rouse. We have a lot of involvement across the country in pioneering new areas to try to get more bang for your buck, find new ways to house more people. We're now one of the co-chairs of the Action Campaign to preserve the low-income housing tax credit. So we're, I think, a pretty effective organization. and and clearly we want to impact more people than we're able to so far. I started with Rick Roseanne's encouragement, the housing center at ULI, because ULI is just a broad group of really talented individuals. And so I thought if I could inspire, you know, the people at ULI to think more about housing, and if ULI with its research arm, its education arm, could deliver the message that we have a problem in affordable housing and in workforce housing, and we ought to do something about it. We can do something about it at the local level, help with zoning codes, help with incentives. And I thought ULI was a great vehicle to deliver that message. The J.C. Nichols Prize is about visionaries who truly accomplish the kind of community building that makes life better for everyone. Ron's work in housing is something that I hope and I think we all believe will be a real inspiration to others. When one talks about the J.C. Nichols Prize, one talks about community building, insight, uh, visionary development, being a highly visible symbol of the ULI. And Ron uh, Twilliger just touches all those bases.